Ni hao. My name is Fuang Chao Yu. But I'm better known as Jimmy Chao. I was born in Fiddletown, October of 1885. I speak regular English and am the only man of Chinese lineage to be buried in Fiddletown's public cemetery. I'd like to share with you a bit of Fiddletown's history. Elaine Zorba's excellent book, Fiddletown, From Goldrush to Rediscovery, does an excellent job for straight data and great photos about my hometown. Also, there have been many documentaries with Fiddletown as the topic. It bears mentioning, though, that there is the tendency for third and fourth hand anecdotes to blur veracity with the passage of time. On occasion important details may get lost, damaged, or completely misrepresented. Now, I'd like to share with you a brief history and a few things you will not find in any book or printed record. The California Gold Rush was a turbulent era, beginning in 1849, and Fiddletown became a lively boomtown shortly thereafter. The immigration of Chinese labor had reached over 2000 in the 1860 census, and by 1878, Fiddletowns was among the largest Chinese populations in California. San Francisco was number one. This population boom was quite temporary, though, as Fiddletown's Chinese section was all but drained by 1890, and by 1900, the number for the census was a mere 16. As gold mining became more costly and difficult, most folks that came for the easy money hit the road. Some even abandoned active claims, while the trickling immigration of Chinese laborers kept many California boomtowns alive. Including Fiddletown. Here we are, almost a hundred years after the Great Depression, and thanks to the efforts of the Fiddletown Preservation Society, many buildings that served as Chinese businesses still stand in Fiddletown. In the 1970s an open-pit limestone mining operation was proposed by Ideal Basic Industries of Colorado that would have jeopardized all of Fiddletown's historic structures with their enormous hauling endeavors in those colossal trucks. At that time, the president of the Fiddletown Preservation Society, Marie Schofield, successfully piloted a mission to put Fiddletown on the National Register of Historic Places, the health and preservation of Fiddletown's 18 historic buildings became protected by this recognition, thus thwarting the destruction and saving all of historic Main Street. The Chinese Gambling Hall, General Store, and Chu Key Herbalist Store are currently museum structures that stand as time capsules for Fiddletown's Chinese heritage. The gambling hall, with an upstairs populated by sing-song girls, was directly across the street from the Chu Key store. In the 1980s, the area behind and adjacent to the historic rammed earth structure of the Chu Key was turned into a town park with a tennis court, basketball court, and other activity areas. The space directly behind the herbalist store was excavated to accommodate the construction. It was at this time that a cache of hundreds of tiny beautiful glass bottles ranging from 1 to 2 inches in length were found, all buried in the same spot. Curious speculation arose concerning the original contents of these little bottles. No one will say for certain, but because of its proximity to the gambling hall, the best bet is that many of these were opium vials. Surprisingly enough, at the time of the gold rush and for decades that followed, the herb opium was not illegal in California. Not until 1881, when a San Francisco ordinance made it locally illegal. Later it became a statewide ban. However the laws were all over the place between the Tariff Act of 1860 and the Harrison Act of 1914 with regards to such things. So let's not judge Fiddletown's early population too harshly, based on speculation, arbitrary laws, and fluctuating ordinances. Speaking of judges and Fiddletown, in 1878, one man who called himself Judge Columbus Allen Purington successfully petitioned the state legislature to switch Fiddletown's name to Alida, because he was embarrassed to be known as the a man from Fiddletown when traveling to San Francisco and Sacramento to schmooze at political events and associated upright citizen conventions and so forth. Alida was his daughter's name. The name Alida does have an actual etymology. It is derived from Latin and has two accepted meanings according to babynames.com. They say, and I quote, the name Alita is primarily a female name of American origin that means truth. Probably a combination of O.L., as in Olivia, and the popular ending E.T. 
also Aletha, Olfia, perhaps a form of Aletheia, truth. Popularly explained as, little winged one, so it means, truth, and or, little winged one. The Aletha mystery is now solved and you're welcome. There is a lot of folklore about Fiddletown among locals, but for a record etched in brass, we can refer to the plaque and stone placed across the street from the park in 1950 by the Centennials Commission. Here's what it says. Settled by Missourians in 1849. Suggested that settlement be called Fiddletown because residents were always fiddling. Changed in 1878 to Alita but original name later restored, once a trading center for American, Loafer, French Flats, Lone Hill and other rich mining camps. Bret Hart added to community's fame in an episode of Fiddletown. End of inscription. The painstakingly restored and fastidiously preserved Chinese museum buildings are frequently open for touring, and schedules are posted where one would expect to find them, especially during late spring, summer, and early fall. One more fun fact. There is a native Miwok landmark near Fiddletown called Chaasi. It's a grinding rock location and has much historical and cultural significance, so there is a museum at this location as well. In this locality you can visit the Cha Se and the Chu Ki all on the same day. If you do, try not to read too much into the fact that both Cha Se and Chu Ki anagram meaningfully. The rearranged letters of Cha Se become the term, we cash, whereas Chu Ki becomes, we check. Who knew? I hope this has been a sufficiently informative and uniquely candid account. It has been my pleasure to share it with you. I'm Jimmy Chow. Zay Chow. Persistent Organic Moss, Thomas Schofield, would like to thank and attribute the following. Online Archive of California. KarenKeyHMDB.org. University of Southern California U. C. Berkeley, Bancroft Library Fiddletown Preservation Society Amador County Historic Archives Fiddletown Community Center DID, Visual Arts Music Was Shadows, and Fast Break 100 BPM Provided by Storyblocks. Twenty twenty two persistent organic moss for ancient California gold. Powered by unspeakable sources, unstoppable forces. Thanks for watching.